what is the antithesis of your being or what really grinds your gears, Brett? Hmm. If you had to pick one thing. And don't worry, we'll we'll get to the positive side of it too. But I just think it's really interesting. Um hmm. I don't want to come off as cynical, but <laughs> do, do it. I I love Austin for so many reasons, but um I feel like a lot of people here every everyone is entitled to create content, but I think just the I think the maybe the intentions why certain people want to create content, whether it's just like pushing affiliate codes or just trying to like replicate what other people are doing in an authentic way. Mm. I feel like that's just kind of like lazy and a cheat code in some ways. And I think, um, you know, I think we just, use, I use social media more so out of a necessity just to try and help make people healthier and help just grow the movement of what we're doing. But I think it's a combination of that and just like the con the constant necessity of like the cheat code and the hack, particularly around like health and wellness and diet and lifestyle. And I have so many friends that will opt for, you know, the Apple watch before they do what Harry does and just get into bed consistently mm -hmm. wake and rise time. Um, just, just simple things like that. Yeah. You know, I've always just found that it's the, it's the hard, tedious, monotonous shit that really moves the needle, but that can actually be really fun too. Yeah. I think you have every right to say that because you're in it, right? You're trying mm -hmm. to preach it, you're practicing it and you're in the content world. So yeah, you have every right to, to kind of be like, you know what? This bothers me a little yeah. bit. What about you, Harry? <clears throat> I think for me, just um, just generally speaking, people who speak a lot of negativity, like words are so powerful to me. And um, if I hear people speaking negatively, I can't, it, it registers so highly on my like mm. volume scale. Like I just hear it so loudly and, and it grinds my gears for sure. Um, just because like uh, most things that are negative, I think generally can be drawn back to you as a person or there is something you can do about it. Like there's some action you can take to make it less negative. And you're also just projecting your negativity on other people, yeah. which I don't enjoy. I yeah. think like a lot of people um, would benefit from maybe internalizing some of that negativity a little bit more. I think that's probably an unpopular opinion today where it's like be vulnerable, talk about your emotions. But I think people need to get comfortable sitting with some of the pressure that they're feeling and actually overcoming mm -hmm. it. And then like leaving, leaving some of these conversations with like you and a higher power, you and God, so that you don't have to necessarily, uh, like as soon as it comes out of your mouth then it's, then it's in your reality. Right. So yeah. I think there's some internal work that you can do by like really marinating in some of those negative, uh, feelings and emotions. I agree. And honestly, I needed to hear that a little bit because I mm -hmm. think maybe this resonates with you guys when you're really sinking your teeth into something. It's you're more susceptible to processing externally in a negative way. And that does have repercussions on, on you and those around you. But I also too think that maybe what you're getting at is people need to be radically honest with themselves because if you can catch that kind of like you were saying, mm -hmm. the switch in the mentality before it comes out of your mouth, you realize like actually part of this is something that I have to take ownership for. Right. And then, and then it doesn't really come out as negative. It's more of like a, a learning point. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's more neutral or maybe even positive. Yeah. Um, so on the more positive side of things, what motivates you the most, Harry? <clears throat> I think for me, it's m most of my motivations center around family and just, um, really like leading a really positive life that, um, you know, I, I think about, like, my kids and grandkids who don't even exist yet, like, every week, you know? <laughs> really? Like, yeah, I think I think about it all the time, which is kind of crazy, but I really, I just think, like, this multi-generational way of thinking and, like, the eternal lens on your own life is how you create, like, a really meaningful life. And I don't mean that in, like, a legacy, like, an egotistical way. I mean that in, like, go out and pursue something noble with, like, ambitious something that will provide fruits for other people to benefit from and, you know, do that for your family, for your friends, for the people who are closest to you and your life will just be um, blessed. I think you'll, you'll live an incredible life if you just think less about yourself and more about the people mm -hmm. around you. Um, and, you know, I, like from my own, uh, from my own story, like my parents got divorced, like when I was 20 years old and, I think I grew up in a family that was incredibly close and that moment for me was a huge shift in perspective on just like what, what I really wanted, uh, in the future. And I, I just, I truly believe that like the nuclear family in the U S 
is the core to like us kind of like i just there's just like weird feeling that i get it's like the u.s is just going through this weird transition and a lot of it is centered around mm. like family units not being intact mm. and um it just hits home for me and i do th- feel like there's not really role models talking about that like mm. being a true family man a person who wants to grow community and like invest into their family so for me that's like the thing that motivates me and makes mm. me want to be the better person every single day there was someone who I was talking with recently that was saying that the more responsibility that you incur, the more fulfillment and motivation that you subsequently incur. And I do think that's true. And I kind of hear that in, in what you're saying. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Really drives you. What about you, Brett? What motivates me the most? Yeah. What motivates you the most? My answer is, was the first thought that came to my mind. It was very similar to the answer that Harry gave you. And I started feeling more of what Harry was talking about, I think, as I started to enter my late 20s as well. And then particularly when I started dating, like, an amazing woman that I finally saw myself, like, really being able to spend the rest of my life with, too. And um, I think in the beginning, I don't want to say it was selfish, but I more so had these feelings of, oh, we have a business. This is really cool. This is great. We can take our time. And, like, there always is this, this part of your mindset that you do have infinite time, but you also have a very short window, too. So I think what's the most motivating to me right now is understanding like this window that Harry and I have to be able to like go all in on what we're doing and living together and working on the business 24 seven. It's like, bro, that is a small window. That's Mm. like, we're talking like maybe two more years max, maybe less than that. Honestly, you don't really know. And I just, I have this feeling that when we're all really old, we're going to be like sitting around the campfire, like being like, oh dude, remember when we did that podcast together? Remember when we did that road (laughs) trip together or whatever? And I think that like grasping onto those memories while they're actually happening and we're creating them, I think is super important. And um, I also just get motivated by the fact that, you know, we're as unhealthy as we've ever been, but there's also so much good information out there. Mm -hmm. And I think that people are really starting to wake up. And so I think that for a lot of people that are creating something, you need to have that that motivational focal point that's so strong that it pushes you to do the work that you do because Mm. regardless of how much you love the work that you're doing, 90% 90 of your tasks are going to be things that you don't ultimately want to do. So you really need to have that strong motivational focal point that will push Mm. you through the tasks that you don't want to do. That makes sense. It's like a sense of urgency almost and and also like um, a mission. Yes. Um, The other thing that's interesting about that is what you're talking about is kind of proactive nostalgia and Mm -hmm. I can't you know claim that I came up with that term but I heard it recently and I I think that's a great way to live um being present is just makes you more capable yes uh, in every way and also more effective at whatever you're sinking your teeth into and I mean it goes back to the maybe the the wooden thing a little bit but it's just remarkable how when you practice proactive nostalgia you are so much more grateful for whatever's in front of you